Our scripture reading is from Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He is risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Share as we tell.
I come to the garden alone. The words of this song have been resonating with me all week long as I have prepared for Sunday. I'm here alone today. I'm here in the garden alone. I'm in a church building that should be full of Easter finery and smiles. I'm alone in the church that should have egg hunts and the smell of cinnamon rolls everywhere. I come alone today. On that first Easter Sunday, Mary and the other Mary were alone too. They come to the tomb to see it, Matthew tells us, alone. Gone are the crowds who had followed Jesus. Gone were the crowds that had waved palm branches just a few days ago, singing Hosanna. Gone were the disciples who had gathered together in the upper room and were now hiding in a house somewhere. The two ladies come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses, while the sun is just coming up, while the Sabbath's day had ended. They come alone, and they soon discover that they are not alone. First, it's the guard set in place to protect the body and to keep the rumors from starting. Then it's the angel accompanied by an earthquake. The angel causes the guards to fall down in fear like dead men. The angel whose first words to the women are, do not be afraid. The women may come alone, but they aren't alone anymore. They leave with the assurance of the risen Christ who has gone before them to Galilee. They leave with the assurance that the tomb is empty and God has done a miracle. They leave with fear and joy in their hearts, meeting Jesus on their way back home. They leave with their lives transformed. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Before they leave, the angel has three imperatives for them, three things that the angel tells them to go and do. First, he tells them, don't be afraid. That's what the angels always tell the people when they arrive. We draw cute pictures of angels with nice smiles and pretty hair. But every single time in the Bible, the angels have to tell the people not to be afraid. Don't be afraid. The women had a lot to be scared of. They were likely afraid of the authorities who arrested and, and put on trial and crucified Christ. Then there was an earthquake and the empty tomb and the presence of one of God's messengers to bring fear to the women on that morning. There was a lot for them to be scared of. We, you and I, we have enough all around us to cause us fear too. We talked about this a few weeks ago in worship. You can watch again in case you missed it on our YouTube channel. There are tools we can use to help with our fear. We can read the news with fear or we can hear the angel invite us to not be afraid. It's our choice. The second word from the angel is come and see. Come and see. See the empty tomb. See where the body was. And yet there's more to this invitation. All through Matthew's gospel, we have been invited to see, to look at what the world fails to notice. Matthew continues that invitation in our passage this morning. Come and see, he says. Peer into the darkness of the world around us. See the wonder that God has worked among us. The earth has shifted and not just from a literal earthquake. God is at work and the earth is being shifted in new ways. So pay attention. See around us what God is doing. The third word from the angel the angel tells the women, go and tell. That's the final word. Go and tell the disciples the good news. Go and tell the disciples what you have seen. Go and tell the disciples that your fear is gone and in its place is joy. Go and tell. Go and tell about a God who raises the dead and makes a way when we thought there was no way. Go and tell the good news about God who has vindicated the crucified Christ and has disrupted the powers of the world. Go and tell the good news. Today, today you may feel alone like the women did. Maybe you're huddled in a house with a few other people like the disciples. Maybe you're feeling alone in this world, forgotten by the crowds and the church that once surrounded you. Maybe you're feeling fear and trepidation about your future. But 
friends, we are invited to be just like those first evangelists. Do you notice that? The first people who tell the good news of the resurrection of Jesus Christ were two women. The first two preachers of the gospel were two women. You've got to love God's ability to turn the world upside down. We, you and I, are invited to be like those preachers in the garden. Do not fear. Look around you and see God at work in the world. And then go and tell the good news. For this is the best news of all. God is at work. God is doing amazing things. God is giving life to the dead. God is giving hope to the hopeless. God is changing things. The resurrection tells us there is hope for our tomorrows. God who raised Jesus from the dead will give life to you and I as well. The encounter with the risen Christ made the women leave with a little less fear, but they also left with joy. May you too encounter the joy that the risen Christ can bring this day, and may you also go. Go and tell the world, tell your friends and family, Jesus Christ is alive. Let that joy seep into your very soul and be sustained by God's love. Let us worship the risen Christ today. Let's sing. Christ is risen indeed. Today we celebrate the risen Christ on this Easter Sunday. Our prayer is that you may experience the joy that comes from our risen Savior. I invite you to pray with me. Almighty God, you give us the joy of celebrating our Lord's resurrection. Give us also the joys of life in your service and bring us at last to the full joy of life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us join together in an affirmation of faith for this Easter Sunday. This is the good news which we have received and in which we stand and by which we are saved. Christ died for our sins, was buried, was raised on the third day, 
and appeared first to the women, then to Peter and the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe Jesus is the Christ, the Anointed One of God, the firstborn of all creation, the firstborn from the dead, in whom all things hold together, in whom the fullness of God was pleased to dwell by the power of the Spirit. Christ is the head of the body, the church, and by the blood of the cross reconciles all things to God. Amen. All right, it's time for today's children's message. I'd like to invite all of our kids who are here today to come and sit up here. Kids? 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 Where are they? Gotta go find them. Kids? Huh. Kids? Kids? Where are you? Kids? Look, I, I brought Easter eggs. And this year inside, it's only candy. There's no broccoli inside this year. Kids? 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 Wait. I know where there's always kids. All right, come on out, I found you. Ah! What? There's no kids in the game room. It's even clean. I can't find those kids anywhere. No one's here right now. I feel so alone. I don't like it. You know what, I feel stuck. I feel stuck inside. And I feel kind of bored and lonely, a little bit sad and a little bit scared. Hey, hey guys, do you also feel a little bit stuck? Yeah, being in quarantine is really hard. Even inside with all kinds of toys and games and stuff like that. I bet sometimes you just wish you could go outside and see all your friends again. I wish we could all be here together today having our big egg hunt. But instead, we're all kind of stuck. What are you going to do first when the quarantine is over? Me? I want to go on a hike with my family and my friends. And then I want to have people come over to my house and play board games. That sounds like a lot of fun. Just to be together again. But yeah, right now, feels like we're all stuck inside. It reminds me of the disciples. Have you heard that story? In the Easter story, there's a time when the disciples are stuck. See, on Friday of a very special week, Jesus dies. And his friends and his family, they see him die, and they're real sad. And then after he dies, they, they take his body and they, they put it in a big tomb and they roll a big rock over it. And it's like Jesus is stuck inside. He's dead. They might never see him again. They're not thinking they're ever going to see their friend again. Their friend who loved them so much. And so in the Bible, it says that they all just kind of went home to someone's house and they hung out for a bit and they were all real sad. I bet they got bored. I bet they felt lonely. Even though they were together, they missed their best friend, Jesus. I bet they were even too sad to play games and tell stories. It was like that for a couple days. But then on Sunday, it says that a couple of them went to Jesus' tomb. And there they saw that the big rock that they had put there was actually rolled away. And the tomb was open. And they meet angels who say that Jesus isn't there anymore. Jesus was dead, but then he's like burst out of the tomb. And then on their way home, they actually run into Jesus and they see him and they're so excited and so happy to see them. And Jesus comes and visits them in the big room that they've all been hanging out in. And they're so happy and their sadness wipes away. And Jesus eats a meal with them. It's like they have a party now that he's not stuck anymore. And because he's not stuck, they're not stuck any longer. And I imagine that they were all smiling and telling lots of stories 
playing games and having a good time. And then Jesus explains what happened. He says, well, I was dead and I was buried, but God made me alive again. And God did that because he didn't want anyone to be stuck when they die. When things are dead, we, we bury them and we say goodbye and we feel like we'll never see them again and we're very sad. But God doesn't want us to be sad like that anymore. And God wants to be with us too. So God did something magical. When Jesus bursts out of the tomb and he's not stuck anymore, he tells us that even if we die one day, we're all invited to burst out. And none of us have to be stuck any longer. And the way the story gets told in the Bible is that once we're all unstuck, it's like we all, everything comes back to life. And God invites all of us to come and be together with him. When we were once far away from him, now it's like we're as close as ever. And in the Bible, it says that when that happens, God's going to throw the biggest party the universe has ever seen. That's going to be amazing. And so we're going to be stuck probably in quarantine for a little while longer, and we won't get to see each other. We won't get to see a lot of our friends or go out and do a lot of the stuff that we like to do. It's, we're going to be stuck for a while. But when I feel stuck, sometimes I think about how good it's going to be when this is all over. And the smiles that I'll have on my face when I get to see you all again and get to see my friends. And that's going to help me get through getting stuck. And the story the Bible tells us, already tells us the end of the story of our lives. We all get invited to be with God forever. And that's going to end in a really amazing way. And so maybe when I'm sad or I'm lonely right now, I can stop and I can think about how good it's going to be when God fixes everything and we all burst out and God invites us all to be with him in the great unstuckening party. And that sounds so good that maybe I'll remember that and get through a lot of hard days that I have ahead of me. And that's actually my prayer for you. If you feel stuck right now, just in your house, or if some days during your life, if you're going to feel sad or lonely or scared or bored or stuck, maybe we can all remember that God loves us, that God made us, and that God is going to help us all burst out one day and live with him forever. That sounds pretty amazing. I miss you all very much, and I look forward to seeing you all soon. Take care, and happy Easter, you guys. On this Easter Sunday, I remind you, there are three ways you can give to the church. One is on our online portal where you can give through PayPal. One is by mailing a check to the church. And the third is by dropping off a check while we're open on Mondays from 9 to 12. I also remind you, we have three ways that you can give your prayer request to our prayer team. We would love to pray with and for you in this coming week. So fill out one of those forms. Give us a, a something to pray for, and we will happily pray with you. You can call the church, press 2, to leave a message on my, on my voicemail. You can fill out the form online. You can find that on our worship page online, on our website, thumc.com, or you can email volunteer at thumc.com, and we will pass that along to our prayer team. We are a praying church, and so I invite you now to a time of prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give thanks that the grave does not have the last word, but your resurrection gives us new life. God, we pray to you now for our community and for our world. God, we lift to you those who are in the hospitals, in nursing facilities, in homes, anywhere, helping to combat the virus that is going through our world. God, we pray to you for strength and for answers. We pray to you for a vaccine and for a treatment plan that can help greatly to reduce the number of deaths and reduce the anguish that we are all facing. God, today we do pray to you for those who mourn. We lift to you those who, um, whose family member has recently passed away and pray for your comfort and your strength for them. Oh God, we pray to you for all of those who are hospitalized for any ailment, especially those who don't understand or um, 
can't feel the love of, of friends and family members who are not allowed to come near them. We pray to you, O oh God, for those who've been placed on hospice recently, praying that they too may find comfort and, and strength from those who are able to come to visit. God, we pray to you today for those who are lonely, seeking your presence with them in a mighty way. Remind them of your love and of the church that is here for them, even if we are apart. God, we pray to you for those who know, who need to know the joy of the risen Christ. May you be found everywhere this day and in the days to come. We thank you, God, for your son, Jesus Christ, who took our sins to the cross, who died our death, and who was raised to new life that we might have life eternal. We pray in his name as he taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We are an Easter people celebrating that we are not alone, that God meets us where we are. I invite you now to celebrate the risen Christ together in a special song with Methodists from all over the world. Let us sing Christ the Lord is risen today.
Brothers and sisters in Christ, go. Go into this week knowing that Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Do not fear. Come and see and go and tell the good news of the risen Christ. Go in the name of God, our Father, His Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.